The onslaught of cheap SSDs just keeps coming, and today I've got two of these cheap drives to show you, the Y3000 and the Y7000 Pro. These drives come courtesy of Yodamaster, which is a company that, like many others, previously focused on USB accessories and other peripherals, but is now dipping its toes into storage. Of course, like most other companies in the storage space, Yodamaster isn't making their own NAND chips or controllers, but instead buying them from other companies. This is pretty normal for almost every single SSD company out there, even Seagate and Corsair, do not make their own NAND or controllers. Of course, because there aren't that many unique components in the SSD world, that means the real differentiator between two different drives is going to be the combination of components like the controller and NAND chips, and potentially DRAM if the SSD has it, uh, customer support, it's a very important thing. It's always nice to have a warranty on your storage, and of course, pricing. With the Y7000 Pro and the Y3000, Yodamaster is definitely leaning hard on the pricing part of this equation. Yodamaster sent in the one terabyte models of these two drives, and technically on Amazon right now, the Y3000 one terabyte is going for $50 and the Y7000 Pro is going for $70. However, at least at the time that I'm filming this, Yodamaster is actually running a promo on Amazon, reducing the price of the Y3000 one terabyte to $45 and the Y7000 Pro to, I believe it's $55. Okay, so let's talk hardware now. The Y7000 Pro is a PCI 4.0 SSD with rated reads of up to 7,000 megabytes per second and rated writes of up to 6,500 megabytes per second. This puts it about in line with other higher end PCI 4.0 SSDs. Meanwhile, the Y3000 is actually a PCI 3.0 drive, and it can only achieve 3100 megabytes per second in reads and a paltry 1900 megabytes per second in writes. Now, that's not terrible, it's not like a hard drive, but still that's pretty low by the standards of a modern PCI 4.0 SSD, which is fairly affordable now, and it's also getting pretty old. This is two generations behind now, and with PCI 6.0 SSDs probably on the horizon either next year or the year after, I mean, it's getting kind of old. Now, these SSDs aren't in Tech Power Up's SSD database, so I wasn't sure what was in them before I got them, and I asked Yada Master where exactly they're getting their NAND and their controllers from, and they did tell me that the Y7000 Pro uses a Maxio Tech controller, while the Y3000 uses a controller from Silicon Motion. They didn't tell me where exactly they were getting their NAND chips from, and I suspect it's from YMTC, a Chinese company that makes cheap but generally good flash memory for lots of SSDs, even SSDs that you've probably even bought. And it's pretty understandable that they'd use YMTC or perhaps another Chinese manufacturer considering that it's really hard to sell a one terabyte SSD for $70 or even less if you're getting your NAND from say Micron. Anyways, let's move on to our benchmarks and see how these SSDs do. As always, we're using our LGA 1700 test bench with the Core i9-1400K, ASRock Z790 Taichi Lite, and 32 gigabytes of DDR5 memory clocked at 5600 megahertz. Despite the 1400K effectively being two years old at this point, it's still the best CPU for getting the most out of storage. Ryzen 9000 still isn't quite to the level of 14th gen, and the new Core Ultra 200 series actually took a pretty big step back on storage performance. We did a video on that. Uh, you should see a link to it in the top right corner. We've tested the Y7000 Pro and the Y3000 in half a dozen different benchmarks, alongside five other SSDs, so you can get a good idea of where Yada Master's drive sit in relation to other models on the market. This is going to get a bit crowded, so pause if you need to. Starting off with 3 Mark's regular storage benchmark, we can see that our lower end PCI 5.0 SSDs are well ahead of the others. This isn't surprising by any means, since they come with some of the latest components, which also happen to be pretty expensive. Meanwhile, our PCI 4.0 SSD including the Y7000, all coalesce around the 3100 point mark, give or take 100. The Y3000, however, is just shy of 1700 points, which is probably a consequence of using PCI 3.0 era technology. 3 Mark also recently added a direct storage benchmark, which tests how much extra bandwidth this feature adds when it's used. Direct storage isn't in many games yet, but it's making gradual progress towards mainstream adoption. Anyways, the PCI 5.0 drives once again are at the top of the chart thanks to their high performance potential. However, However, the gap between these SSDs and the 4.0 models is much slimmer than it was in the regular storage test, with all PCI 4.0 SSDs landing between 150 and 175%. The Y7000 ended up being the slowest PCI 4.0 drive by a modest margin, while the Y3000 was in dead last yet again. In Final Fantasy XIV's official Dawn Trail benchmark,
work. All but two of these SSDs took less than six and a half seconds to get through the loading screens. The exceptions were the Firecuda 530R, which really struggles with this test for some reason, and the Y3000. That being said, it's pretty hard to notice the difference between six and 10 seconds across multiple loading screens, so it's not like these two drives are terrible for gaming. We're looking at our first non-gaming benchmark with Diskbench, which we've configured to transfer the entire Witcher 3 game folder from one location on an SSD to another. This means an SSD has to read and write at the same time, making for a pretty intense benchmark. The gap between the PCI 5.0 and 4.0 drives is about as tiny as it gets outside of gaming load times. The Y7000 isn't super fast here, but it does beat Oracle's O7000, another cheap SSD made with Chinese hardware. It probably doesn't surprise you that the Y3000 was yet again in last place, hitting just a third of the speed that the Y7000 mustered. Crystal Discmark also tests reading and writing performance, but only separately and under specific conditions relating to queue depth and whether the data is sequential or random. Starting with the sequential test, with a Q depth of 1, the PCI 5.0 drives are in the lead as expected. The Y7000 is essentially tied for third with the O7000. Both are ahead of the 530R and the MP600 Pro in H. The Y3000 brought up the rear with roughly half the performance of the next fastest drive. But at a Q depth of 8, the rankings are slightly shuffled. The 530R and MP600 end up being the better drives overall compared to the Y7000 Pro and the O7000. The Y3000 is still in dead last. Performance differences in the random test with a Q depth of 1 tend to be pretty small. Still, the Y7000 and the O7000 lost to the other PCI 4.0 drives, as well as the two PCI 5.0 models. The Y3000 is still, of course, in last. Things look much better for the Y7000, however, when the Q depth is cranked to 32. In fact, it's just shy of matching the O7000 for first place, but a close third is still more than fine. The Y3000, by contrast, was in last place by reading performance, but in writing performance, it actually just barely beat the 540 and the CS2150. Finally, a win for this PCI 3.0 SSD. Finally, we have Iometer, which we've configured to hit our SSDs with a constant writing operation at certain storage levels. At higher levels of capacity use, writing becomes more challenging, something you may have noticed with your own storage. For this test, we've filled each SSD to 10% capacity to start off. Up top, we have our PCI 5.0 SSDs, though the 540 started suffering performance issues around the three minute mark due to overheating. The Y7000 was neck and neck with the O7000 for the entire test, and both were just behind the two other PCI 4.0 drives. And you can see where the Y3000 ended up. When we take the average writing speed from this data, we see pretty much what we'd expect to see based on the line graph. At 50% capacity filled, we're looking at a pretty different graph this time around. After about 20 seconds or so, the Y7000's performance plummeted to roughly 100 to 300 megabytes per second, right alongside the O7000. The Y3000 also succumbed about after a minute. The other drives didn't really have this issue, and this can be thanks to having onboard DRAM, which the last place drives don't have, or having a more robust cache solution. The average writing speeds for our Yada Master drives are pretty poor, but they both did better than the O7000 at least. Of course, at 90% filled, things don't get any better for the Y7000 or the Y3000. Sure, the gap shrunk between these two drives and the more premium models, but they were still transferring data at a snail's pace. We can see that the Yada Master drives fell to the 170s in the 90% fill test, which is definitely pretty slow by the standards of our other drives. We also took some temperature data from the 10% iometer run, which shows the worst case scenario for heat. And since heat is a byproduct of power consumption, we can get an idea about power draw from this too. Although I suspect the Y7000 and the O7000 are very similar in respect to the components they use, they clearly consume very different amounts of power. The Y7000 is the hottest SSD on the chart, hotter than even the Firecuda 540, which thermally throttled in the 10% test, while the O7000 would have been the coolest were it not for the Y3000. This tells me that they might not use the same exact Maxio controller, and there's a pretty good chance they use completely different NAND. You probably expect such a high temperature to hurt the Y7000, but it really didn't seem to, at least in regards to performance, which was pretty consistent for the entire 10% benchmark. As for whether this is a safe temperature, the low 80s should be fine for an SSD to hit, though ideally it would only be hitting it for brief moments rather than a very long period of time. So should you buy either of these Yada Master drives? I think one of them does make sense and the other not so much. The Y7000 Pro is so similar to other SSDs, especially Oracle's O7000 and other SSDs that use similar components, so this really comes down to pricing. Now at $55 or even at $70, the Y7000 Pro 1TB is a pretty decent deal compared 
compared to the more premium models that we looked at in this review. The 530R 1 terabyte costs, I believe, $105 at the time of this video going out, and the MP600 Pro in H should cost around $85. The price difference between the Y7000 Pro and these two SSDs is generally larger than the performance difference. Now, compared to the O7000 and other similar, even identical drives sold by brands such as Team Group and Lexar, it's basically a wash because they're all kind of going for $70 for the one terabyte variant. Now, of course, the Y7000 Pro does have a promo going on Amazon, so it's actually technically $55 at the time of this video going up. But I mean, that's not that's not a huge price difference. It's good, you might as well take it. But presumably that promo will eventually end. It's a lot different for the Y3000, unfortunately, because it's just so slow, it really needs to have a price tag to match. And at $45 or $50, I mean, it just doesn't have that price tag. There are just too many cheap PCI 4.0 SSDs out there that are maybe only 10 or even five bucks more. There's Crucial's P3 Plus, which I believe is $60 for the one terabyte model. And that's like twice as fast, at least according to the on paper specifications. Probably comes with DRAM too, I haven't checked. But even if it doesn't, it doesn't really matter. There's also Team Group's MP44L, which I've heard is a pretty good drive. And that's only $55 for the one terabyte model. Whether we're talking the one terabyte or the two terabyte or the 512 gigabyte model, the, the Y3000 just doesn't really have a price that makes any sense. That all being said, there was one area where the Y3000 beat pretty much every SSD, which was the temperature test. And that implies that it has a very low power draw. And that's pretty good for laptops where SSD power consumption can actually significantly uh, impact your battery life. Now, to be clear, I'm not saying that the Y3000 is a great PCI 3.0 SSD for power consumption purposes. I don't have any PCI 3.0 SSDs to compare against, but what I am saying is that compared to PCI 4.0 and 5.0 models, at least, it did pretty good. So with all that being said, I think I'm giving the Y7000 Pro a thumbs up because it's pretty fast and it's pretty cheap. The Y3000, on the other hand, it's just got too much competition. It's not really fast enough, and it's one strength uh, power Power consumption isn't all that important unless like you have a laptop or another mobile device. Anyways, that's all I got for you. If you enjoyed this review, then please like the video, comment, subscribe, and click the bell icon to get notified the next time we upload. If you really like what we do here at SI, then please donate to our Patreon so that we can keep this thing going. Thank you all so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.